When was the last time you said Allahu Akbar in Salah and you genuinely felt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you? When was the last time you went into sujood in your Salah and you said Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la knowing that you're putting complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm making this video because I deeply care about you the same way the Prophet Sallallahu cared about his Ummah and he tells us to care about the Muslims and the non-Muslims to take his message and to spread it amongst the people who haven't been there at the time of his so I'm just conveying what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has conveyed I'm just conveying the things that I've learned in the past couple of months and do you even understand do you even know what that means to put your face on the ground for someone to put your forehead multiple times a day on the flat floor of this earth for someone, for Allah. Do you even know what that means? What it means for submission towards Allah? And I've been discovering that for the past couple of months. What it means to, to truly give all of your affairs, your love affairs, your business affairs, <sighs> in submission to Allah. What does that mean? Have you felt it? That when you say Allahu Akbar and you put your face on the floor and you're praising Allah, that He is listening to you? Do you feel His presence when you're on the floor saying Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la? I, I hope I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to make my point like very, very clear, which is why I keep repeating myself. But I want to convey this as best as I can because for the past couple of months I've been doing a lot of soul searching and I've been learning a lot about the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and all these questions come to my mind whenever I think about conveying this message to you guys because when was the last time you looked at your parents and you smiled at them with genuine love and concern in your heart When's the last time you held your mother by her head and you kissed her forehead, knowing that this is the girl, this is the woman that birthed me, that allowed me to become a Muslim, that allowed me this beautiful lifestyle that I have? When was the last time you looked at your father as a respected figure and you deeply understood that this man has given me everything? He sacrificed so many of his own desires for me and my siblings, you know? Now, I don't visit my parents that often, but if you guys notice my background here, I'm filming this on my iPhone because I got rid of all my camera equipment except for just one camera. But all my other fancy lenses, that fancy camera equipment that would give like high production or whatever, I got rid of those because that is not my intention with this YouTube channel anymore. My intention isn't to have cinematography, to have all the glitz and the glams on my YouTube videos, to have the big introductions, to have all the cinematic reels, that's not that's not the reason why I'm here. If you guys want to see that, then I have them in my old videos. But from here on out, my only mission is to help connect you with our Creator, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and to kind of show you guys what I've been learning. So I doubt I will ever upload another YouTube video that is just meaningless and inauthentic and just fluff. You know, the next time I turn on my phone my camera to record something it's going to be because I have this genuine desire to teach you guys something to show to share something beautiful with you guys today I have something beautiful that I want to share with you guys which is the journey that I've been embarked on for the past couple of months this journey wasn't one that I have been doing alone I've been doing it with my fellow roommate Junaid and alhamdulillah I'm not saying that we're perfect and I'm not saying that we're the best of people but we've grown because of one simple thing we found Allah and we found the Prophet and his teachings I want you guys to, I want you guys to deep that to, to hear that again like I found Allah and I found the Prophet and his teachings what does that what does that even mean I keep asking you guys what does that mean when was the last time you did this and that because for me, I never understood what that meant and what that truly felt like. And this is me, a religious kid from a religious family, religious religious background. I'm Hafid, I memorized the entire Quran. 
but I never understood truly at the core what it means to know Allah, to trust Him. To trust Him is to know Him. To know Him is to love Him, you know? So in the beginning of this year, a lot of you guys have saw my apology video uh, of me saying sorry basically that I wasn't the role model that I wanted to be. And I saw this quote on the internet um, where, it, where it said, be the man that you need in your life or something something like that um it was like be the man that you know you need because if you can become the man that you need for yourself then that's the best way to go about life and who better to look at as a role model than our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so in the beginning of this year i was feeling lost and broken if i'm being completely honest and i found this book called meeting muhammad right by sheikh umar Suleiman. and wallahi this book has absolutely transformed my life it transformed the way that i view islam transformed the way that i view salah it transformed the way that i view my parents and business and everything spouses even you know this book is basically a compilation of stories describing how the prophet peace be upon him was when he was on this earth with his companions it goes in depth through his character, his demeanor, his appearance, how he dealt with kids, how he dealt with his spouse, how he dealt with beggars in moments of hardship, you know, when he was in battle, all of these little different things. It gives, it's like if vlogging, because we live in such a digital age today, we're so used to visually seeing these vlogs, right? Seeing people wake up at 6 a.m., seeing people go to these workout classes and becoming the best selves, but... Our Prophet Sallallahu never had the vlogs, but he is the number one most highest documented individual in history. And he will always be the number one most highest documented individual in history. So we should learn from him, you know? And this book is basically his life story, you know? Not his life story, sorry. But this book is basically a description of how it was when you met him, you know? And I want to read a chapter of it. The chapter is relatively short, um, but I want to read a chapter of it to kind of share the wisdom and the knowledge behind it. I finished reading this book already yesterday, and I'm starting it again today, which is why I wanted to share it with you guys so you guys don't miss out on the things that I'm reading as well. Um, so without further ado, let's read about his demeanor because... I think it's important that all of us just understand how the Prophet them was. Some things that I don't think that they're going to mention in this chapter, maybe they will, is the way he spoke, the way he looked, how he always had a smile on his face, subhanAllah, how he loved children, you know. The description of his body and the way that Shaykh Umar Sadiman is able to convey such a beautiful way of describing our Prophet Wasallam is incredible. It will make you fall in love with Islam even more. And when you understand that that is the face of the religion that we follow, it makes you want to crave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. Because when you learn about Allah, Allah will teach you about yourself. Because who who better to learn from than your creator himself? So well, my dear respected brothers and sisters that are watching, build a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like this. Like he's just sitting in front of you and you're talking to him and you're deeply listening to what he has to say, you know. But anyway, without further ado, I'm getting distracted. Let's, let's read his blessed demeanor. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With, with reference to character, there are many verses of the Quran which emphasize subtle etiquettes pertaining to body language. In fact, when Allah describes the qualities of his elite class of believers, Ibad al-Rahman, the first thing he mentions about them is their demeanor in terms of how they tread the earth lightly. Allah SWT says in the Quran, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا The servants of the most compassionate are those who walk on the earth humbly. SubhanAllah. Who better to learn from than the Prophet wasallam, who is the most compassionate man that ever walked on this earth humbly? It's very easy in today's digital age to look at these entrepreneurs and these self-improvement gurus and these people who don't even know 
the Prophet and we look up to them unfortunately because we don't have we don't have someone advocating for the Prophet the way that people advocate for these entrepreneurs and these gurus. But I'm here. I'm here to show you guys and to tell you guys what our Prophet was like. Likewise, when Luqman al Hakim was giving his son advice, he emphasized the importance of speaking and walking in a dignified manner. Furthermore, when Allah Azza wa Jal discusses how we should respond to our parents, we are told not to grunt to them by saying even uff. There's even an ayah in Surah Isra where even my father, my own father, he used to explain to me when I was younger, don't ever say uff to your mother because I was a very rebellious kid growing up. And I used to go, ma, why this? Why that? Why are you so strict on me, ma? Why are you? And I used to, I used to disrespect my mother so much, you know? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Subhanallah. Uff. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala literally uses the word uff. Forgive me, I keep getting sidetracked, but alhamdulillah. These points are also emphasized in the Prophet's statements as well. For example, in one hadith, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that a person should not be treacherous with their eyes. This prohibits one from winking and making inappropriate facial expressions behind someone's back in a way that betrays them. And this is very, this is very, very true. Because there's so many times where someone wrongs you or someone disrespects you and then they finally leave the scene and you look at your friend and you're like, you give him that look, you know what I mean? You give him that look, or you know, say for example, you're walking into a superstore with one of your one of your boys, right? And a really attractive woman passes by, and none of you guys lower your gaze like you're supposed to, and then you nudge your friend on the side. And you're like, "Yo, bro, did you see that?" Like, you know. So it's very important that we learn from these stories that even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never, ever, even with his eyes, showed any type of negativity you know so that's all I'm going to be reading from the demeanor um but just to give you guys a little bit of an explanation as to how our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was he was the most gentle man that ever walked the face of this earth and subhanallah when you study his life and you study how he was with his wives there was even a story um we all know that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of his most beloved wives to him was Aisha radiallahu anha there was a time even when the Prophet Sallallahu walked into the masjid and he saw Aisha radiallahu anha sitting there watching some people, I think they came back from war, from like Abyssinia or something and they were doing the Abyssinian dance inside of the masjid. And the Prophet Sallallahu saw Aisha radiallahu anha and he went to her and he sat right next to her. And then Aisha radiallahu anha put her head on his shoulder and together they began to watch this beautiful dance that was happening in front of them. And after some time, the Prophet ﷺ asked Aisha Anha, Hasbuk, is it enough? And Aisha Anha, knowing that she wasn't watching, knowing that she wasn't sitting there for a prolonged time because she was enjoying the dance, rather she was enjoying the shoulder of the Prophet ﷺ to rest her head on it. She said, no, not yet. And the Prophet ﷺ, with love, compassion, and patience, he said, okay. And they kept walking. They kept, they kept, uh, what is it called? They kept watching this dance. Um, and then it got to a point where the Prophet asked again, is this enough? And Aisha al-Lawana said, yes. And they said, okay, khair. They got up and they went. So it just goes to show how gentle of a man he was. And the Prophet was a busy man. He had things to do. He had, he had people to attend to. He had orphans that he was taking care of. You know, subhanAllah. But it just goes to show how gentle of a man he was, you know. But anyway, when, and then when you finally have a good understanding of who the Prophet ﷺ was, then you can close your eyes and you can visualize what it was like to sit in his company. For such a beautiful man to be right in front of you with the utmost beautiful character, it's a man that you've learned so much from, from his dealings of people, to the dealings of his wives you can sit in front of him inshallah I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants all of us Jannah Jannah to al-Firdaus I mean 
so that we can sit in front of the Prophet ﷺ just like this, how I'm speaking to you, and you can ask him questions, and you can just, subhanAllah, it brings me to such a big smile, but you just get to be in his blessed company, subhanAllah. Like I told you earlier in this video is, I found Allah, and I found the Prophet ﷺ, and the sweetness when you go to Allah and you repent for the sins that you do on a daily basis, and you understand the humility that the Prophet ﷺ humbly walked on this earth with, then I promise you, your prayer and the way that you view the world will completely change. When you do a submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you completely submit all of your affairs to Him, Wallahi, He will change everything. There's an ayah that goes, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ And I don't know the exact translation, but it goes something to the matter of um, but it goes something like When you forget Allah Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you forget yourself So my dear brothers and sisters That are watching this You guys do not forget Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is If you have never felt His presence when you say Allahu Akbar Allah, If you've never felt his presence When you said subhanahu rabbi al-ala And you never felt that closeness to him When you're closest to Allah Is when you're in sajda and if you haven't felt that yet, then I urge you, if you want your Ramadan to be different and you want to take advantage of the blessings and the treasures of Allah, get to know Allah. Study Him. Study the Prophet ﷺ. Get to know what makes Him happy, what doesn't make Him happy. Educate yourself on Shaytan and how He's had millions of years to plan and structure and strategically, <laughs> to strategically make you mess up. 